Good morning to you, my friends who might be listening or viewing this broadcast. We thank God for you. We pray that things are well with you and that you are indeed well. <laughs> we know that times are strange. We live in a, a, a time that you don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next, but there is one thing that you and I can be assured of, that the God that we serve uh, knows all, is all, and have all power in his hand. And, and like, uh, like Job would say, though he slay me, yet would I trust him. We thank God for you. Uh, it's interesting now how it is, and I really am thinking about how many people how many uh, individuals who confess Christianity is holding on, still holding on to God's unchanging hand. Times change and situation uh, dictates, but I have discovered that it's best of all to hold on to the hand that is firm and unwavering. So we commend you today that you yet and still trust in the God of our salvation. I, I thought about the season and what we are approaching. Uh, pretty soon we'll be approaching uh, the Easter season, which involves Lent involves the death, burial, and resurre resurrection of Christ. And it, and it leads me to think how awesome our God is and that he looked beyond our faults, yet he loves us unselfishly that he would send his only begotten son to die for us. That's amazing. That is a truth that you should not take for granted or lightly. Uh, I, I believe that more focus should be on the love of God now, this time than anything else. And what the world really need to understand is what love truly is. So today we, we, we call your attention to a very, very profound verse that is found in the third chapter of John, 16th verse, and you know it well. Uh, in fact, let's go there. It says, from the King James rendering, it says, for God so loved, so loved, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, in him, key, in him, uh, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And so we want to reason with you just for a few moments today from the thought, endless love, endless love. What the world really needs to know is that God loves them, whoever they might be, regardless of place, time, event, happenstance. God's love for you and I and them is endless. And that's what uh, individuals need to know. God, we thank you. I invite you to prayer for your endless love, a love that cannot be snuffed out, burned out, put out. Uh, in fact, it was Paul who said to us, what shall separate us from the love of God? And he goes on to name uh, several things. We are conquerors today because of your love. Endow us. Refresh our mind and renew our spirit uh, that, that we might draw close to you. 
But what the world needs today is love. Not just emotion, but need to understand the love of God. Thank you now. May your word go and rest where it need to rest and convert and convict and do that that humanity or humankind can't do. Thank you, Father and Master, in Jesus' name, amen. Endless love. I'm sure by now I can almost rest in it that somewhere and some place, some time, uh, you have heard this particular verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his son that whosoever believed in him uh, should not perish but have everlasting life. There are several verses of scripture that really permeate the human mind and soul and, and sticks to them like a good peanut butter sandwich. Psalms 23, oh, John 3, 16. Hmm. And there are several other verses that we learn somewhere in Bible school, young people's class. We have heard many sermons uh, about John 3.16, God so loved that he gave his only son, his only begotten son, that who so ever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. Uh, right, right off the top, it, it, it teaches us so much about the unconditional love that God has for his creation in regards to that we see that God so loved that he sacrificed the God in the God to come rescue us from a hell that was not really made for man. This particular verse is full of acclamation and promises uh, to us, the Christians, about the eternal life that waits us for those who believe in Christ takes us back to the account in Genesis where we learn about the sinful nature of, of man, how it entered humanity and, and, and spawned this disease called sin to the entire world by Adam and Eve. This is a beginning story, again, of how God plans to redeem humanity. Yeah. Nothing, really, that we can do by following the law of offerings, sacrifices, and all of that, uh, that is really concrete enough to repay the debt owed for sin. Paul again reminds us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave. His only begotten son. We, we, if, if, if you can understand that, you see how uh, that connects. And so God sends his beloved son as the perfect sacrifice for sin. Uh, 
What an unselfish love. What an what a unrelenting love. What an endless love. And through it all, we find out that though the wages of sin is death, that's the penalty. The gift of Jesus Christ produces life for those who accept him, who believe on him. This particular verse really depicts the greatest love for the world that God himself is willing to offer up his own, own only son uh, to be sacrificed to die on a cross to redeem man back to himself. And so in John 3.16, we see this. When we read the account. But reading it would be like the passing of a good magazine or a newspaper. We get uh, what is said in, their, in the writings, but we do not really ponder what it is. This love is not just a superficial love that causes us to respond uh, by emotions. This love supersedes that that is caused uh, to love one another uh, because we are Kendricks, brother, uh, sisters, and that kind of stuff. This love it's based on the fact that the creator that made the creature loves us so much that it didn't matter what we done. That love that God sends to us, gives to us, have for us, is unconditional. It's not based upon who's who. It's not based upon the have or the have not. It's not based upon the big or the small. It's not based upon your, your affiliation or your name. This love really beats from the heart of God to all humanity. Uh, and so we see in a sense that in, 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 in this verse, John 3.16, it captures, if you would, uh, the fullness of the gospel meshes. For there is no other hope that is found but in our Redeemer, our Messiah, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the only one. He is the perfect, the legitimate sacrifice for the debt owed where we could not pay, and a debt paid that he did not owe. And so we find the strength, we find the length, we find the depth of the love of God towards humanity. Who would not want to love a God? Who would not consider uh, the love of God and that all of the wrong that have been done and all of the wrong that is done, God still love us, still cares for us, still beckoning for the unsaved, still beckoning for those who are yet uh, without hope. It is here that he, we are promised everlasting life. It is here that we can rest our show and park our faith in Jesus the Christ. Because salvation is found in other, not other. It, 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 it is saying that we live now in a world that seems that is really a, a, a chaotic. It is messy. It is oftentimes scary. People are disappointed. They are hurt. And we find ourselves facing many hardships. 
This particular verse is the guiding light to what is peace, to what is comfort, to what is hope. It is the resting place that we can find eternal glory awaiting us beyond this span of life that is full of pain and full of suffering and full of sorrow. It is in here, this verse, that we are reassured that God who loves us so much, who would give us the ultimate sacrifice of his uh, beloved son, that we could find life, not just living haphazardly, but the assurance that God cares for each and every one of us. It is an incredible, it is the incredible of God's loving power and special promise to every, every believer, believer. We can cling, if you would, to the promise or the promise when life gets hard or doubts set in or when we wonder if anyone cares. We are promised that God does love us. And that when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, we are promised not just life, <clears throat> but we are a promised eternal life. And yes, we are. And that's a good thing. <clears throat> that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I said that we are about to enter in a few months this Easter Lent a thing where we learn about the passion of Christ. Do we not know that Jesus, if he was like us, could have said, no, I'm not going to do it. But we find Jesus praying, strength to go through the stuff, to be the sacrifice for all of the world. We find him praying, and yet comes to a resolve after he knows he's going to be beaten, after he knows he's going to be hung up for our hang-up. Find, we find him saying, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Who would not want to come to a God with all power in his hands? Who would not love him that first loved us? And so we find today in this verse that nothing can separate us from the love of God. God so loved us, so loved us unconditionally uh, that it becomes an endless love. From the time of Adam and Eve demise, Tell the time that the dispensation of grace is no longer. God will love us endlessly. And so my brothers and sisters, in saying that, we must understand what Paul is saying out of the 8th chapter of Romans. Who or what can separate us from the love of God? Shall persecution, shall trials, shall tribulation, shall this, shall that? No, he goes on to remind us that in all of these things, we are conquerors. In all of these things, the love of God sustains us. In all of these happenings that we are going through now, <clears throat> that we really don't understand, the love of God seals us. And I'm so glad to tell you that when friends forsake you and even loved ones let you down, when there's no one to run to, when you find yourself alone and lonely, there is a God that loves you endlessly. There's a God that when you accept him through his word and through his spirit, he will walk with you 
and he will talk with you and assure you that he will never leave you nor forsake you. I get happy when I think about, not, not, not just see, but when I think about what he's done for me. And if you would just take a, long, take a little while and take a little time and just rehearse in your spirit, look down the years of your life and see that you have never been alone that God has always reached out with his loving hands to comfort you, to protect you, to shield you, to hold you, to enforce you, to give you courage, to make you strong when you were weak, to turn you around when you were wrong. When you look back and think about it, you will see the endless endless existence of God in your life because he has an endless love for all humanity. And I just want to say to you who are listening, I just want to question you as I began to take my seat. Isn't God all right? Isn't he all right? Hasn't he been good to you? Isn't God all right? Hasn't he encouraged you? Isn't God all right? Haven't he sustained you? He is water when you're thirsty. He's your bridge over your trouble. He's your food when you're hungry. He's your comforter when you're going through a dry spell or a barren land. And he assures you that he loves you. No matter what, pick up yourself now. Put on your spiritual cap. And understand that other things will forsake you. Everything will leave you. But God's love will abide with you forever. And so we want to encourage you today to know that the God that you serve, the God that created you, the God creator of heaven and earth, spe takes special, special special interests in you and that you know and that you would know that he is the God with an endless love for you. May heaven smile on you, my friends. May you be glorified and lifted up and edified. And remember when you're going through Whatever it is, your sickness, your life, that we have a God that not only gives you life, but gives it to you abundantly. May God bless you today. May heaven smile upon you. May you be blessed. Let us pray.